Okay, this is going to be a quick video to show you how to integrate um, Ionic, specifically Ionic React, and uh, their components in a Beat JS uh, application. And what we and those who don't know Beat, it's a front end tool. It packages everything up. It's extremely extremely fast. Um, and you'll see how fast it is in this example. So after we package up everything and get it running nice as a website using Beat, we are going to uh, integrate Capacitor so that you can run your application while we'll show it running on a simulator. Steps here are pretty straightforward, but um, that's what the plan is going to be. So let's get started with creating our Beat application. So uh, I have, let me get back to my top level. I have my top level directory. We're going to just follow along with the basic instructions that they provide here. So let's copy this, the latest, go back to our terminal, paste our command in, and let it run. We are not going to be using TypeScript in this project, so we're just going to call this Vite React. So Vite React App 1. And we're going to say React. And we're going to use plain React, and now it's done. So let's uh, CD into our app, Vite React at one. Um, we need to install some things for Ionic. Don't worry, there'll be a blog post that goes along with this, so you can see the steps that I'm following. So the first thing, let's just do an npm install. Okay, and then after we do the npm install, we need to install some things for Ionic to work properly. So um, we need the latest version of Ionic because this um, V supports in the Ionic beta. So we need to make sure we put next on the end. Same, we need to make sure we get the right router. So we need to put next on the end there, and then we need um, React router. So we're going to install those. And now that's all installed. So let's. Did I run an npm install already? It looks, let's see, I did run an image install. So now let's open this thing up in um, my editor, VS Code. Okay, on our source directory, you have your basic kind of starter app. Let's open up our tunnel well, first. Let's make this a little bit more visible. Zoom in on this a bit. Okay, now let's, uh, let's just quickly run this. So we just type Vite, let this thing run. And now let's open it up in a browser. And I'm just going to push this over to the side a bit. But you see we have our basic application. Um, but we're here to see Ionic in it. So I've put together some Ionic code already. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace this whole app.js. And let's drop in the Ionic code. OK, what did I miss? So it looks like I did not. I, it looks like I installed the incorrect um, router. So let me go back over to my terminal. Where did my terminal go? So let's come up here and copy this. We'll see npm install. That's in. Let's start up my server again. And we have our Ionic app running. And let's just do the, I just got the basics in this first one to show how everything's working. So we go to our next page and we go back. And so we can see we have our basic Ionic app running and just kind of walk through the app quickly for you. Um, had to install all the Ionic imports. Um, clearly we have all our Ionic components here. We have the default classes and styles imported. We have our Ionic app. We start with our app, the React router route, Ionic React router wraps everything. We have our router outlet, and then our paths on the inside, and then our components are just this basic Ionic page components wrapped in content. Um, we're using use history to get the history and a push to go to the next page. So that's it very quickly. So yay, we've got the first part done. But now let's do the, the next parts, which are more interesting. So um, let's create a new terminal here. And um, what we really want to do is run this thing on the device. So first, let's fix some code up here in this, this viewport. So we got to account for the notch on top of my device. 
So once again, all this code will be provided for you. Don't worry about it. We're pasting this in here. Let's format this to make sure we get the uh, proper settings that we need for the viewport so that it renders properly on the phone. So we're set now with that. But um, now let's get to capacitor. So we had that up before. Where did that go? So what we want to do is we want to be able to run this thing on device. And so capacitor kind of lays out how you get this thing going. Uh, install uh, install capacitor CLI and capacitor core and do cap init. So let's just follow along. So copy these, get back to our terminal. Now let's use our internal terminal. So we'll go here, let that install. Okay, so we've got that installed. And then the next thing you need to do is the cap init. But the inter what we want to make sure we do is the, um, just to note the build directory for Vite is actually called dist as opposed to build. So we need to make sure we specify that when we do, when we make this cap init call here. So let's set that. We'll enter that command. And it's asking for the basic, what's the name of our app? We'll accept the default. Um, we'll leave the default package ID. You can change that later. Then we'll let it run. So now we've initialized our application with we see you have the capacitor config in here and our disk directory set appropriately. And um, you need to install what you want. Um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do, actually let's just install them both. But for the purpose of this uh, application, I'm gonna focus specifically on iOS. Let me just make this a little bit bigger for everyone. Let's zoom this out. So we're going to install the um, capacitor component to support that. So we have that done. And the next step is that we're going to just add iOS because we're doing iOS in this version. To NPX cap add iOS. The iOS platform's added. And then now to let's see it run on a device. And so we do the NPX cap run iOS. Oh, I always make this mistake. I did not, let me break this. I did not do my build, so let's do a Vite build. So that's packaging everything up. And if you look up now, we have the disk directory that I was complaining about before. And so now Let's do our run iOS. So now see it's copying the assets from the disk directory to the public directory uh, for, for um, excuse me, for the application. I've been using my iPhone 12 Pro simulator. So let's use that same simulator. So hopefully it'll load faster. Now it's running. And so once again, the purpose here is showing how to use Vite to get an app running on device. So let's wait for our simulator to load up because that might take a minute. Okay, so it's deployed and here's my app running on my phone. So see we can have the, the same uh, functionality that I had locally. So that's great, but what the cool advantage that we, what we wanna get is we wanna get live reload working here. So we can really see the power of Ionic and its web environment development. So to get live reload working, um, we need to, the only solution I found for now is I have to convert, make this an Ionic project. So, so let's do an Ionic init. Um, we'll just use our same project name from up here. And what we want to say is that this is a custom application. And so you need to say it's a custom application so that it knows how to build it. Um, I went ahead and added this earlier. But what you need is you need to add this line here, this ionic.serve vite so that when you run the um, live reload command, it knows how to actually build the website. So this is it right here, Ionic Serve Vite. Once again, this stuff will be covered in the blog. So after that's been added, um, we should now be able to just do a live reload. Let's see if we get lucky and get this to work at the first time. So let's paste the command in and give it a go. Um, 
it gave a bunch of uh, output, but it's not relevant to us because we already have capacitor installed in a project. And I was just asking us which device we want to run on. We'll run on the same simulator, the 12 Pro. It should now be pushing an updated, it should now be pushing an updated version of the app to my device. So you can see the app's been deployed. We have our functionality, but this is now where the power of the live reload comes in. So let me come back down to my app and let's just make a quick change. See my title, home with live reload. When I save this, it just gets updated and that's pretty fast. So that's really what I wanted to show was how to quickly integrate Ionic. Uh, so you can see Ionic working with Vite. You can then see Ionic and Capacitor working with Vite, and then you can also integrate Live Reload. So I hope you found this video enjoyable. Please make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.